what's up hello my name is Emma and today I'm going to be giving you guys some mystery thriller book recommendations. Since I was a teen I've always been interested in true crime and unsolved mysteries so it's no secret that going into my adult years I became very interested in mystery thriller fiction and it is now one of my favorite genres. I have some of my young adult and adult favorites to share with you guys so I hope you enjoy the video. Before I jump into my recommendations, I'd like to thank Skillshare for once again sponsoring this video. Skillshare is an online learning community with nearly 30,000 different classes available to you on topics like art, business, and technology. Since I've started using Skillshare, I've mostly been focused on taking classes about motivation and productivity. Whenever I find myself seriously wasting time on social media, sometimes I like to just pull up the Skillshare app and I'll watch even just a 10 minute segment from a class and I feel like it really resets that motivation motivation for me. I've also found some classes on budgeting and saving money, which is something I seriously need help with considering I'm traveling in a couple of months. Skillshare is a service I've really enjoyed using. I feel like it just makes a wealth of knowledge more accessible and affordable considering their yearly subscription tops out at under $10 a month. And if you're interested in trying out Skillshare for yourself, there's a link in the description and the first 500 people who sign up will get two months free. For zero dollars, you might as well try it, but I'm definitely interested in exploring more of the classes Skillshare has to offer and seeing what else I can learn. My first recommendation is Sadie by Courtney Summers. Our main character's name is Sadie, who has recently run away from home in order to find and take revenge on the man who killed her sister. Our other main character is a radio personality named Wes who finds himself searching for Sadie and begins to uncover what has happened to her and his perspective is told through a podcast format. Speaking of auditory media, the audiobook for this novel is unbelievable. It is truly one of the best I think I've ever listened to. Not only is it a full cast recording, which always happened to be my favorites, but just the production behind it is immaculate. There are scenes when Wes, for example, is like doing interviews outside and you hear like, birds chirping and it is just so immersive. But the story of Sadie is extremely powerful. It is a raw and honest depiction of revenge, sexual abuse, and missing women and it handles all of these topics in a way that is not sensationalized which I think is the most important aspect of this book. It's got so many layers because not only are we finding out about what happened to Maddie through Sadie's eyes, we are watching her develop as a character and then we are also finding out what happened to Sadie through Wes's perspective. This book was super hyped when it came out last year and I just feel like the talk about it has really died down which makes me very sad because it is truly such an incredible book. It is one I would hope to reread in the future and I'd highly recommend it if you are someone who is interested in some dark mysteries. The next young adult mystery I'd like to recommend to you guys is Genuine Fraud by E. Lockhart. This is sincerely one of the most unique books I think I have ever read and that's mainly because this book is told backwards. Once you finish a chapter, the following chapter goes back in time a little bit so everything you just read hasn't happened yet. I was a little confused at first to the point where I almost DNF because I was just like I just don't understand this but once things started clicking with me and I got the hang of like figuring out these significant details after they were already introduced it was just an absolute genius execution. The reason I haven't given you a synopsis is because I really can't like on booktube I feel like all of us kind of just don't give the plots of E. Lockhart books because they're the kind of novels you have to experience for yourself. What I can tell you is it follows two girls who had a very intense friendship and all of the repercussions of the time that they spent together. And because a story is told through such an unreliable narration, I kept flip-flopping with who I trusted and who I felt empathy for and it just made for a super fascinating reading experience. Genuine Fraud is a pretty polarizing book. I feel like most people either love it or they really didn't like it and I feel like part of that is because the story itself isn't all that intense and it's not like a traditional whodunit mystery with one crime to be solved. The plot twists and reveals are not the most shocking that I've ever read but it is the process of understanding those reveals and just the storytelling overall that was super alluring to me. This book is just a massive psychological trip that is all about unraveling the truth in an unconventional way. I really love it. I feel like there is no book out there like it so if you haven't given it a shot yet I'd highly recommend. The next YA mystery recommendation I have for you guys is Truly Devious by Maureen Johnson which was one of 
my favorite books of 2018. Our main character's name is Stevie and she is traveling to the elusive Ellingham Academy where she is going to study true crime. Her main goal in attending the school is to solve the cold case that occurred in 1936 related to the family of the founder of Ellingham Academy. So this book is told in two timelines, one in 1936 when we are getting more information about that occurred all those years ago where our only lead is that the perpetrator goes by Truly Devious. And in the present day, we follow Stevie at the same school as it appears that Truly Devious has returned. Now I've read a good handful of YA mysteries and I feel like a lot of times they are just very contrived. I feel like they are very predictable. They don't go super into depth with the characterization and they just never wow me. Truly Devious absolutely stands out from all of them because it is so clever, witty, and well structured. Not only are the characters super charming and easy to fall for, but the mystery itself is just so beautifully constructed. There are so many twists and turns that you will never expect going into it. Following these two crimes decades apart, trying to decipher the clues that Maureen Johnson has laid for us, and also figuring out how they're connected was just such a thrill. I read the sequel, The Vanishing Stare, earlier this year, and it was just as fantastic, if not better. I feel like the reason I'm inclined to say that is just because I felt an even greater connection with the characters, which really made the story that much more impactful. But this is truly like an iconic YA mystery series. There's one final book coming out, so there's so much content for you guys to devour and if you have not picked it up yet it is on the top of my recommendations list. Before I jump into my adult recommendations I have one more YA book for you guys and it happens to be one of my favorites that is the Charlotte Holmes series by Brittany Cavallero. Oh I am so ready to talk about the Charlotte Holmes series. This is a four book mystery series following the descendants of Sherlock Holmes and John Watson named Charlotte and Jamie. The first installment in this book takes place at a boarding school in Connecticut where Charlotte and Jamie are both being framed for crimes that suspiciously resemble some of the most iconic Sherlock Holmes mysteries. This series is so freaking good. Number one, the characters. Charlotte is intellectual and calculated, albeit a little unhinged, and Jamie is grounded and supportive, if not a little impulsive. The two of them complement each other, unlike any pair I think I've ever read about in literature. Of course, some romantic feelings do develop between the two of them, but the core of the story relies on their friendship they just have this deep intimate connection that I feel like us readers can't even understand the full extent of. I really loved the mystery in this book. I love me like a dark intense gritty mystery but there are also ones that I feel are more entertaining and lighthearted. I feel like the series as a whole sort of fluctuates on that spectrum so it's got like everything I could possibly want. And the construction of the plot reveals and the information gathering, the detective work, it just gets better each time. I do have some conflicting opinions on other installments in the story. For example, the second book was a pretty big letdown for me and just was not my cup of tea, but there are other fans of the series that absolutely loved book two even more than book one, so it's definitely like you gotta feel it out and figure out which mysteries are your favorite. But as a whole, this book has some of the best, most complex and developed characters I've ever read about in a young adult story. The mysteries are super great, and if this is a genre that you're interested in, I'm assuming because you clicked on this video, A Study in Charlotte is one you absolutely must give a try. Moving to the adult section of this video, the first book I'd like to recommend to you guys is An Anonymous Girl by Greer Hendricks and Sarah Pekkanen. This story follows a makeup artist named Jessica who signs up for a psychological study in order to just make a little extra cash. What she doesn't expect is being roped into this mess of paranoia, manipulation, mistrust, and deceit, and she begins to learn how deadly obsessions can be. I really enjoyed my time reading An Anonymous Girl. It's a book that, although it's not my favorite thriller out there and I have some criticisms of it, it, I absolutely flew through it and I especially think it is a great introduction into the world of adult mystery thrillers. For that reason I don't think it would be very impressive to more seasoned thriller readers but if you're someone who like has read some YA mysteries or you're just interested in getting into the genre I feel like this book is going to hit all the marks to really grasp you and keep you wanting more. This book is told in two different perspectives, one in first person from Jessica's point of view, but the other is written in second person told to Jessica. I adored this aspect of the book. It just added this really creepy and disturbing factor to think about someone whose entire internal monologue is dedicated to another person without their knowledge. The story was very compelling. I could not get enough. And it's one of those books that starts in one place, but the direction of the 
story goes totally further than you would have expected. One of the things I didn't like about this book though is just the themes of morality and ethics were just way too straightforward for me. I just hate being force fed things in books and I feel like these themes were nuanced enough throughout the plot and progression of the story without the characters blatantly referencing morality and ethics every five seconds. The other thing I didn't love about this book is I just thought Jessica was too skeptical of a main character. I've sort of been getting sick of unreliable narrators because I think that they sort of fall into the same format but now I've realized that having someone who is too skeptical and just questions the motives and truth behind everything is just as irritating to me. And even though I thought it was a little bit predictable for someone like me who's pretty familiar with the format of mystery thriller novels, it was still very entertaining and an enjoyable read, especially if you're new to thrillers and looking for a more psychological twisty novel as opposed to something that's very violent and gory. An Anonymous Girl is definitely one you'll want to check out. The next book I'd like to recommend to you guys is Dark Places by Jillian Flynn. I have read what I would consider to be like the three main mysteries of this author, but I decided to go with Dark Places because it is my favorite. Our main character is Libby, who as a child was the survivor of the brutal murder of her mother and sisters and testified that her brother is the one who killed them. So while her brother Ben is in prison for those murders, Libby begins to interact with a secret group called the Kill Club where all the members are obsessed with true crime and they try to get information out of Libby in order to free Ben. What do you know? It's another dual timeline story, part of it taking place in 1985 following both Ben and him and Libby's mother named Patty in the time leading up to the murders and then we also follow Libby in the present as she's working with the Kill Club and trying to uncover what really happened all those years ago. Libby is absolutely one of my favorite unlikable protagonists because she begins very rude and mean and disrespectful and aggravating and she is just such a pain in my butt to start. But as the story goes on we get to know her more and she begins to grow as a result of revisiting her personal history. She becomes very determined, motivated, and compassionate and I just loved being able to see that soft side of her. Everyone's got a different opinion on what is the best Gillian Flynn book. Some people say Sharp Objects which is my least favorite. Other people say Gone Girl which is the most hyped but I personally loved Dark Places. <laughs> It is super chilling and engaging and it is one I would highly recommend. I say highly recommend a lot, don't I? I really need to up my vocabulary. The next book on my list is a longtime fave and that is Night Film by Marisha Pessel. I actually got to interview Marisha Pessel about her most recent YA science fiction type novel. So if you wanna check out that interview, I will link it down below. Our main character is a journalist named Scott who basically blackballed himself in the industry after speaking out against the cult horror filmmaker named Stenelius Cordova. Cordova his daughter has recently been found dead. It is being ruled as a suicide, but Scott does not believe that all is as it seems. Driven by a need for revenge, Scott decides to investigate the days leading up to Ashley's death and expose the Cordova family once and for all. Night Film is just a special book to me. It is one of my absolute favorites that just twisted my mind in a way that I did not know it could be manipulated. This book is just so gripping and exhilarating. It was extremely vivid and easy for me to visualize. Scott running around New York City trying to find the last people that Ashley interacted with in order to get a scrap of truth. This book is actually a mixed media where you will often come across web pages and newspaper articles and all of that which really just add to the story. I actually did not like Scott all that much as a main character. He was just very selfish and his priorities were totally out of whack but the secondary characters were unexpectedly very charming and really kept the story going for me but the main thing that drew me was the plot. Night Film has has this very dark, heavy, intense atmosphere that I feel is only exacerbated by this horror film cult following. It just gave me such a desire for a real life Cordova who made these disturbing films that you could only find on like these blackboard secretive websites. It was just very fun and interesting and unique. This book really messed me up. My head was just spinning the entire time. I was on the edge of my seat with suspense and I could not guess what was going to happen next. Unfortunately, Unfortunately though, I did not love the ending. The conclusion was just like a little bizarre for my taste. I would be very interested to see how I would feel about it reading it a second time and being more prepared going in, but the ending just wasn't my favorite. Everything else though 
It was so incredible. I raved about night film like a lot in like 2016 or 2017. I haven't really talked about it in quite a hot minute, but I love this book. Talking about it has just made me more passionate about the story. It's so good and I would love more people to read it. And my final book on my list of mystery thriller recommendations is Pretty Girls by Karen Slaughter. I have actually read another Karen Slaughter book which is called The Good Daughter, but personally Pretty Girls is my favorite which is why I wanted to include it on this list. This story follows two estranged sisters. We have Claire who has married a millionaire and is just like living her best rich life and we have Lydia who is a single mother struggling to make ends meet. The two of them are plagued by the unsolved disappearance of their sister but they have not communicated for almost two decades until one night when Claire's husband is murdered. This book is not for the faint of heart. While many of the books I've already recommended in this video deal with a lot of intense topics like murder, violence, sexual abuse, Pretty Girls is in another universe. It deals with all of that and more, especially like very, very graphic depictions of murder, rape, and torture. If you get uncomfortable or queasy by that stuff very easily, you do not want to pick up this book. In addition to my interest in true crime and serial killers, I've also always been a big fan of reading like Reddit stories like No Sleep or Let's Not Meet and especially like deep web stories if you've ever encountered any of those. And Pretty Girls gave me all the feelings I experience when reading or listening to those types of stories and that's not something I've encountered outside of the internet which was really cool. It is just a deep examination into the true wickedness of humanity and I just loved watching that unfold. Karen Slaughter is an immensely talented author. I'm so excited to read more of her books in the future because she is just so great at writing complex family dynamics. Not only did this twisted plot and all of these wild unexpected reveals keep me going but also the relationship between these sisters, watching them rekindle their relationship and dig up everything that initially destroyed it underneath the scope of all of this darkness and pain was just really, really compelling. I really think you should read this book if you're as screwed up as me. <laughs> so that concludes my list of recommendations for mystery thriller books. I really hope you guys enjoyed. I feel very passionately about the genre, which is why I waited so many years to make this video to ensure I was giving you the most well-rounded list I feel I could at this time. So I really hope there are some books that I mentioned that you either have read and loved or other ones you want to try out. In the comments below, let me know your thoughts on any of the books if you have read them. And of course, if you have any recommendations for mystery thrillers, I am always looking for more. But that is it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you soon for a new one. Bye!